the benefits of shooting mirrorless for wildlife. Hey, welcome to Photography on the Wild Side. I'm Susie Taylor, sitting in for Lisa Langell, and with me today is Nick Papagallo. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Photography on the Wild Side is brought to you by Parkwood Studios, and we're sponsored by PAC, Photographer's Adventure Club, and they do all kinds of stuff. Go to photoadvclub.com. Let's talk a little bit about shooting with mirrorless. Recently, Suzette Allen, Lumix Luminary, uh, joined us for a presentation to the local Phoenix chapter of PAC, and it was a packed, packed house, house yeah. <laughs> of members that came to listen to her presentation and actually watch her presentation. She incorporates a lot of video in with her uh, products that she offers to her customers, and it was very, very impressive. I loved it. She offered a series of 25 tips, actually 26, she threw I know, an extra she in snuck there, one in. right? We had to kick her out. We're like, that's it. Here's the door. <laughs> <laughs> Went over. <laughs> Went over. Yep. Well, it'll be happening at the end of this video, too. <laughs> <laughs> so she offered 25 tips uh, plus a bonus and all about mirrorless cameras. And a lot of us have gotten into shooting mirrorless cameras. Mm -hmm. um, a few types of photography are kind of lagging a little bit in adopting mirrorless gear because of limitations either real or perceived and throughout her her presentation uh i thought about wildlife photography i thought um, of a lot of things she had my brain thinking of all the different applications of what she was doing it was pretty cool yeah um, she used a couple of different examples of shooting wildlife but then i started thinking about a few other features and stuff too um but what I think is going to make a big difference in the choice first off for whether or not to go with mirrorless in the field for wildlife is one of the new game changers, the Lumix 100 to 400 lens. We have it coming Yay! to us. It's it's supposedly I haven't seen the alert yet, but B&H is sending us yep. one to finally demo. They're they're finally starting to sell. Sure. So uh, I tried to get a pre-production one, and that didn't work out. So we uh, there was only a few. Yeah. Well, John and Suzette had one uh, at the meeting, and I got to look at that, You're and like, I also Ooh. got to see it at B&H also. So I can't wait to get my hands on one to actually play with. But for mirrorless, for micro four-thirds shooters, so specifically, yeah, the conversion is, it's a, it's a two times crop factor. So it's a 200 to 800. Yes. And you can imagine an 800 standard format lens, full Canon. format lens, it, full frame is ginormous. It's like, it looks like a Canon. And it's like $20,000, oh, $15,000, yeah. $20,000. Oh yeah. Just and you not want to carry it. Unattainable for, you know, regular, you know, people You'd like have to me. rent it, yeah. Right, right. You might rent it and you might be afraid to use it because if you drop it, ouch. Yeah, but the, the new lens uh, that Lumix just released is about eighteen hundred dollars, right? Seventeen ninety nine. It's, a, it's about to, the size of my Canon seventy two hundred. Yeah, yeah, probably smaller and lighter. Yeah. So. So, um, looking very forward what to the, that. What's the aperture on that? It starts at four point oh. Wow. Yeah, I think it's four point oh to five point six gotcha. or six, something okay. like that. Yeah. Um, but carrying on. The so let's just assume that that lens is a game changer when it comes to wildlife shooting for folks that are used to shooting on that very long end of the spectrum of lenses, focal Bird, lengths, birders and bears, sure, and tigers and lions, everything that you can't get as close to either for its safety or your own. <laughs> well, at Yellowstone, you could just run right up to the stuff on the iPad, that's oh, fine, yeah, bisons, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bison, and you put you them can, in the trunk. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that it that's seems fine. to be a trend. Yeah. So <laughs> it's perfectly fine. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> do it. No problem. Yeah. But mirrorless cameras tend to have, um, and, and we're not just talking Lumix. 
So uh, all the, the Olympus cameras out there, the there's Pentax, right? There's Fuji. Fuji, Sony. They have additional bells and whistles that the, the longstanding DSLR uh, kit uh, bodies don't tend to have. Sure. And so some of these might be handy and useful for wildlife photographers. Yeah, well, one, one that I've played with a very small amount in the studio here mm -hmm. was the 4K photo feature. So we had a, and, and some of the applications she was showing last night relate to wildlife photography, but we had Aurora in here and we were throwing uh, silks in the air. So mm -hmm. she had these long dress and silks and we we're throwing them in the air. So while I wasn't shooting, I started to play with this because I'm like, I want to learn this a little bit. And I started doing this 4K photo behind the shooter with natural, the, the light that was in there, which was dark. So it was uh, more challenging than outdoor and wildlife. Mm -hmm. And I can pick where in the frame I can actually stop mm -hmm. the silk from falling. So we, they would throw them up and they'd come down and mm -hmm. you would shoot your camera in front of me and you had one shot, maybe two if you're really quick. Right, if you're and really then quick. I had every one of them and I could roll through mm -hmm. my camera and be like, that's the one. 30 frames a second, and if it took like a second and a half for those silks to fall down, you have a good bit of photos to pick from. I looked at facial expressions, I looked mm -hmm. at the lighting. Of course, when their flashes, your mm -hmm. flash went off, I couldn't use that one, but right. there was the ones all before that and after mm -hmm. that I could use. So she showed one that her husband John shot up mm -hmm. in Flagstaff or in Sedona mm -hmm. of a bee yep. coming up to a flower, just frozen, solid. Mm -hmm. So she was able to, she, was she talking about uh, your frame rate, you can go faster with it. Well, the shutter speed. Shutter speed? Yeah, shutter speed, you can go faster. 4K, uh, in at least in the Lumix bodies right now, the limit in terms of the frame rate for that, uh, I think it 4K is 30 or maybe 60. I'd have to double check <laughs> that 4K video, but the 4K photo shoot, shoots 30 frames per second. So the, right now, my... my my technique Earth. that I use for like shooting hummingbirds mm -hmm. is I go out with a wiffle ball bat and I hit it and then I take a little string and I hang it I see. and then I put it by the flower and I shoot the picture. How and kind then, of you just to use a wiffle ball bat. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> you know, you hurt your shoulder because it's really light, you swing it, you miss it. Right, it's over, <laughs> yeah. So so now I don't have to do that. No, no hummingbirds have to get hurt. Right. Hummingbirds, no hummingbirds. Hummingbirds around injured, the world rejoice. Injured in the in the making of this photo. So 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 in all seriousness, but you can actually set your camera up. Yeah. She was saying run it on the app, which I've used mm -hmm. the app, mm -hmm. and be able to just watch the hummingbird come up to the flower and then hit and hit it from a one. safe distance away yep. and get the pictures. And most importantly, from that, what what is the biggest point I think that we don't want to overlook is that you get a usable still image. So Huge. while from a video, you can you can always pull a still out of a video file. A video has always been just a series of stills packaged, yeah. you know, with a start and end point. Yeah. Um, but this will be crisp if you use fast enough shutter speed, obviously. But um, it will be eight megapixel in size from that 4K photo. Which she was printing some pretty big print she oh, was yeah. showing us last night. Mm -hmm. Crisp pictures, so yeah, eight megapixels. And that's she a She had function. one almost four feet wide. That's a function of the 4K, so that's not a limitation to the camera. Mm -hmm. That's a limitation of the 4K, so when they come mm -hmm. up with 5K and 8K, 8K, and that's gonna get bigger. 8, yeah, it'll be 4K and then 8K. So you'll get a 16 megapixel, yeah. I think, out of the 8K, so it's yeah. as they add more, more K, yeah. We need more K. K. <laughs> Bring more K. Yep. Once we get more K, you'll have more megapixels. Yes. So this is only the beginning. Yeah. Like she was saying, so, the bleeding edge. Right. So that's just the starting point. So let me just move on to the other benefits of mirrorless and these other bells and whistles that you Why? might think about. I'm sold about. on that. that what more know, do we need? I know. I don't think we need any more. Okay. But what <laughs> about what about something like while you're doing your video, you've got constant preview. So you can What's see that? that you're getting the proper exposure uh -huh. before you take a shot. You don't have to take the shot, then Chip look it. at your histogram and stuff like that. And it's going to show you directly what you've... Before. What you've, oh, yeah, before you shoot the shot. Never mind um, the focus. So focus peaking. Uh, you'll be able to see that you've got your subject crisp 
you can see focus beacon well, that's what we're using here a manual focus yep. it puts little green lines or blue lines Sparkly all dots, over yeah. what's on focus so you can get my nose in focus or my eye by yep. zooming in and making yep. sure and while you're doing that most of these cameras have touch screen so you can touch well, the good ones many of them <laughs> have touch screen some don't and that some turned don't. me off to it so yeah. some some are so the I, I tested them all mm -hmm. last year and that was some of the things that turned me off to the Fuji and Sony. Mm -hmm. Fuji has a great image. Sony has a huge image, but mm -hmm. the touchscreen and every one of those use, those shooters are like, mm -hmm. oh, well, we don't need it. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, if I gave you an iPad right now and it wasn't touchscreen, you would give it back to me like it's broken. And that's kind of what happened to me is I tested out mm -hmm. the Lumix and the Olympus and the other ones, even your 70D, mm -hmm. and yep. it was all touchscreen. So I could mm -hmm. focus on your eye mm -hmm. and shoot. And I'm done. I don't have to do knobs and dials. And they're yeah. like, well, I don't need that. I don't need that. I'm like, and what she said last night is exactly what I said was once you have it, you're ruined. You yeah, can't you go don't back. Go you, back. Can't, you can't unsee it. It's yeah. like you can't, you're, you're just like, I You I, feel I, hamstrung. Yeah. You're like, I now I have to go in here and I have and to I press, don't even care I have about to press one flicking. button to activate it. And then I gotta go move my focus point. And while you're trying to follow a bird that was in the nest a minute ago and now it's taken off flight and you want to get it. You want to capture it as it's flying off, you know, you can just click into the on distance, it. tap, click. bang, and you've got it. And she was saying there's a feature that I don't even know that's in there that could follow it, too. Wasn't she having the well, girl dance on the beach and it was like following? Yep, yep. that's the focus follow. Um, and that that is actually, I think, in some other cameras, too. Um, a lot of it's these It's not are. exclusive to mirrorless, um, but yes, very, very helpful. And on that same note, um, Focus racking, so you could oh, yeah. even during video, but also during stills. So during video, you can let's say it's the bird in the nest, and you're focused on the bird that's kind of in the front, and then um, and you're doing the 4K video. Let's say you're doing 4K video, you can change your focus point while you're videoing, and, just and it will smoothly just switch the focus on the other focus point. So applications in uh, while you're shooting wildlife, one of the big important probably things about being in the field with animals is staying kind of camouflaged, right? And not disrupting the environment. Yeah. So you don't want to be making noise or yep. even it's same thing, hunting and all these other things you're, you're, you're hiding and you're waiting yeah. for something to, you're, so you're hunting with a camera. You don't camera. want to distract them and, uh, and also change them from their natural behavior. So silent mode in these cameras is actually silent. You were yelling at me last night. You're like, shut off your beep. Yeah. So I, was I could like, turn, like, the, turn your yeah, turn it off. Turn it. But if you shoot in silent mode in the mirrorless cameras, you don't have the mirror moving. Slapping. So there is no sound. You're you're just it's electronically capturing the images, and. I and you're like not going to disrupt your... So well, those are just the, a few tips. One of the things I really liked about it, too, was um, how she was hybrid photography video. Yeah. So she would show something that was a video, mm -hmm. very short, not like video like you think video mm -hmm. like our parents used to do, like, yeah. hey, jump in the pool and smile, and it, like, yeah. like, like ten, two seconds. Yeah, two to ten seconds. And then, and then show the still. Yeah. So mm -hmm. then it would be like, yeah, two, it was like two and then you'd have your like three shots like click click mm -hmm. click and yep. you would so she had these like little formulas for it and it was like it was dynamic and it was yeah. catchy because you give that to someone or you showed as a, a, an example or an ad and it's like oh look there's the bear and then here's the shots I got yeah. you know so you could show the bear walking through the water and then yeah. the bear holding a in fish its, in the environment yeah. giving context to those still images it was it was very cool what she had done yeah. so and, and she's like I'm still trying to develop all this I'm just, I don't know where I'm going with it but I like it and yeah. I loved it too it was it was different so yeah. and it doesn't take a lot of editing she was doing a lot of editing in photoshop so yeah, she in and uh, Video. she optimizes workflow and stuff too. Oh, her twenty-five tips are um, she's posting them on her personal blog, and that I believe is SuzetteSays.com. You can also go to SuzetteAllen.com and find those tips. She's putting them out once a week, so we were treated to the whole basket of mirrorless so tips. <laughs> uh, go to her her blog, her website, and uh, and you can get them once a week. Cool. along with lots of other content that she offers. So um, again, I'm Susie Taylor, and I'm just sitting in for Lisa Langell, who is on her way to Alaska. 
and Nicholas will be going there also. And that will be very exciting. So um, I just want to thank you for joining me and covering yeah. these tips. I cool. hope they've been helpful. And don't be afraid to try the mirrorless gear because I think you'll enjoy it. And especially that brand new lens. Tell us what you think and join us next time at Photography on the Wild Side.